and of course it starts with dialogue. You cannot go to the dialogue that seemed to be championed by, by President Seven. One, what is the history of these conveners? Who are they working for? Who do they see twist to consult to agree with the President of Seven as the chief guest of the National Dialogue? Why do you launch it in State House? Don't we have a neutral venue? It's the agreed on agenda. If we do meet indeed, what's our agenda altogether? We're being uh, beaten up, we're being arrested, tear gassed and refused to assemble. So how can we be in a dialogue when also we are, the, the, the um, Seventh Government is, uh, is doing this to us? If we sit together, we don't have a law that will compel the government to implement what we would have agreed on as the people of Uganda. Leaders of political parties, to use this opportunity to ensure that the reservations they had, which stopped them from coming, are addressed here so that they can be incorporated into what we have been uh, doing. Now that we are sure that it is important to hold this dialogue, it is very important if they come and participate because they are leaders. But should they fail, refuse, or neglect to come, the dialogue will still go ahead. That's the kind of arrogance that we don't. You know, you can take the arrogance to Bamgereire Commission, but you cannot bring the arrogance to. You can take it to Bamgereire. She will stomach that. But Ugandans are not going to stomach that. What can he say? That's his business. That's if he feels that way, it's his prerogative. And it's our prerogative to either say yes or no. But we can't be forced into something we disagree with. It cannot be a national dialogue when others are not include, included. So.